Hi, welcome to this video for the BTEC Applied Science Level 3, Unit 19. What we're going to be doing is going through some spectra, IR spectra, just actually looking at trying to spot what functional groups are present. So not the theory of the instrument, more just the interpretation. So the first question we've got here, we've got three spectra and I'm trying to spot which uh, is which of the three substances showing up here. Now the thing that I would do initially is I would actually draw the three molecules out. They're all based on the four carbon chain. On the one for dibromo. One for diol. And the butane dioxide acid. So what I'm looking at is sort of any unique bonds that I can quite easily spot based on this infrared absorption data, which you'll always be given. So we've got the alcohol OH, we've got a carbonyl group. And we've got the acidic OH there. The carbon joint of the halogen is going to be down in the fingerprint region. Quite difficult to actually spot that. But we can see we've got enough characteristic bonds to try and pick out the others. So first off, if we try and look for the alcohol, OH 3230 to 3550. And the OH is a big broad peak. So if I look here, yeah, this seems to be it straight away. So I'll put a little question mark there, possibility. We've also got a big broad peak here, so it could be this maybe. This one, definitely not across this region. This is just going to be a CH, that little sharp peak you'll see appears in all of them. So to try and separate out, just to make double sure, because we can see there is the acidic OH as well, which appears fairly high. The one thing that separates out the alcohol from the carboxylic acid is this carbonyl group, the C double bond O, 1680 to 1750. If I look here, 15, 16, so around this region, looking up, nothing there. Whereas 15, 16, 17, see there very clear again this carbonyl group is very sharp so easy to spot that so the carboxylic acid we can see there this one c that means this one is definitely the alcohol oh whereas this was the acidic oh the alcohol be in here and just by process of elimination therefore the haloalkane is in there. Now two features that support this is butyl-ene nitrile. First off draw the molecule out again. So characteristic bonds we're looking for, the alkene and the nitrile. The alkene we can see we're looking 1620 to 1680 and the nitrile 2220 to 2260. So 15, 16, 17 we're looking in this region here. Yes, we've got that C, double bond C. And the nitrile, 2000, one, two, looking up this region. Yep, can't miss that. So we've got the nitrile there. So the two features that support it, you would just say there is a peak 
in this region, which is characteristic of this bond. Now, three spectra that are quite hard to distinguish. What we've got here is an aldehyde, a ketone, and an ester. So an aldehyde group, ketone, and an ester. We can see they all have this carbonyl group, the C double bond or, which I mentioned was the very sharp peak. So we need some more information to separate these out. Now, the aldehyde's the easiest to spot of the three. This is what's called um, a Fermi's doublet. Uh, it's a little sharp peak 2720 to 2820, if my memory serves me right. And as we can see, that's fairly characteristic of an aldehyde over the other two. They've all still got this CH in there. But the aldehyde got those couple of extra peaks. Now, spotting between the other two, what we're essentially relying on is trying to spot this C single bond or. There is a tiny difference between sort of where the a carbonyl peak would appear, but because it's such a range, it's not really a good way of doing it by eye. And the annoying thing about the C single bond O is it's down in the fingerprint region. So again, this isn't really very um, useful to us. It's quite hard to spot. You would normally use a better instrument than IR for distinguishing between these. So stick them in a proton NMR, for example. But we'll have a guess and say that we've got this peak down here, whereas the other looks fairly smooth. Possibly it could have been that. You could have made an argument for it either way. So we're just going to say, having a guess, this one is the ester, and this one is therefore ketone. Few more functional groups just to go through. So we've got in here either just a straight up alkane, I've got a carboxylic acid, and I've got an alcohol. So the alcohol we saw earlier, it's got this big broad peak up in high region with this here. The carboxylic acid, we're looking for the carbonyl group, 1680 to 1750, quite clear to spot out of the others. And then the acidic OH, not really as clear as the alcohol one, but again, it's sort of, we can see it there, this broad peak around it. the acidic OH. Now the alkane, it's usually solved by deduction of removing the others because it doesn't have any sort of characteristic peaks. We don't have the OHs up here. We don't have any carbonyl groups in there. Likewise, no alkenes, no nitriles, things like that. So the alkane, all it really has 
is this CH there. It looks quite pronounced on this one because there's nothing else really on there. And final one, just as one last iteration, C6H12, uh, R is unsaturated, RS is saturated. So what we're looking for again, unsaturated is that alkene group, 1620 to 1680. So 15, 16, 17, we're looking up this region, nothing there. 15, 16, 17, look up. And we can see we've got the alkene. So R is represented by spectrum two, reason. So peak at 1620 to 1680 is carbon carbon double bond. And the covers. Pretty much all of the common organic functional groups you'll see at this level. Thank you.